assistant professor and course course coordinator of forensic science at the department of geology st joseph college which is an autonomous college at ipchalakuda in the state of kerala india dr anish is a presiding this session dr anish is the founder director of communicable disease research laboratory cdrl at the st joseph college he is a research supervisor in geology under the university of calcutta eight research scholar and a national post doctoral fellow are working with him with a more than 13 years experience in teaching and research evident from his publication including more than 50 research articles dr anish was honored with the various award including ugc winner uh, our research award 2016 winners international research award 2016 teacher of the year 2015 research of the year 2014 engage scientist award 2010 by national and international agency he has completed ma many major research project funded by ugc ksc scte kerala scrb dst government of india he has been working as a principal investigator of indo us research project funded by dbt government of india he is also serving as a scrb dst postdoc mentor Once again, welcome to Dr. Anish, and I hand over the session to him. Okay, thank you, Anup. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Shiv, am I audible? Yes, sir. Carry on. Okay. okay. Uh, respected R. Kirti IFS, Director, of the State uh, Forest Training Institute. Uh, respected uh, uh, Dr. E. V. Sonia uh, from R. G. C. B. Uh, respected uh, Police Officers and uh, various respected uh, in, uh, officers from Forest Department. and office bays and delegates since the time immemorial the most dangerous of species homo sapiens has used animals and plants to his own ends he has fed upon them clothed himself with their skin and treated himself with their medicinal properties throughout the centuries of man's existence the exploitation of wild fauna and flora has in a sense probably changed a little the wildlife include undomesticated and diverse forms of flora and faunal species which is essential for ecological balance and human survival and the illegal trade wild species of flora and fauna around the globe the need of the time therefore is to utterly focus on the wildlife protection for the sustainable development of biosphere and future viability of human in this lecture Mr. Andrew Wolf, CEO and founder of Prestigious Wild, the forensics, the missing link in the compact against wildlife crime. Well-documented methodologies and techniques with its cons and pros from his experience and expertise will certainly benefit the court of law and the scientists working in this area to build down life crime rate by scientific investigations nothing great will be achieved without great persons and people are only great if they are determined to do so mr andrew wos an international ted talk speaker has the professional experience include policy advisor for national prosecutor office netherlands forensic innovation manager to the netherlands forensic institute 
program director to the Netherlands Forensic Institute, and so on. Even in the midst of your busy schedule, your online presence here today is much valuable to us. ICFSA has indeed been very meticulous in organizing this event with vigilant planning, inventing ways of executing every small detail. With due respect, on behalf of ICFSA, a center for higher learning, I extended to Mr. Andrew Woos a most esteemed and hearty welcome. With this small introductory note, I would like to invite today's center of attraction, Mr. Andrew Woos, to present his topic. Thank you. So over to Mr. Andrew Woos. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, I want to thank all the participants of this webinar uh, about wildlife forensics. I would especially would thank Professor A.B. Joseph and Dr. Sifa Prasad to deliver me this opportunity. I also want to uh, thank all the people who gave me this wonderful introduction. Um, sorry, I can't recall your names, beautiful names, but a little bit difficult for me. But I'm most welcome to uh, to deliver this, uh, this talk. Today I will give you a lecture about wildlife forensics and the Wildlife Forensic Academy. I gave this lecture from my home in the Netherlands. I would like to pay a visit to your beautiful country, but unfortunately I'm not able to travel because of the pandemic. The coronavirus has a strong connection with the topic of today's webinar namely wildlife forensics. But I have to spend a few words about COVID-19, the virus that is transmitted from wildlife to humans. This is not the first time. In the past decennia, we have seen AIDS, Ebola, SARS, MERS, and today COVID. Wildlife organizations have warned us to stop with poaching, traveling, trade, and consumption of our beautiful wildlife. The biggest demand for wildlife and wildlife parts is from, in, from China and several Asian countries. It's used for consumption and as well for tra traditional medicine. It's a culture that's nearly 5,000 years old. But the side effect of this is the transmission of viruses from wildlife to humans. And this causes worldwide pandemics. On this slide, you see the bat. Yeah? Okay. Um, on this slide, you see a bat. The bat is the owner of the COVID virus. The bat transmitted the virus to an animal. In this case, the pegolin. The pegolin is the most, ex most poached animal in the world, used for traditional medicine and consumption. The pegolin has transmitted the virus to a human and humans transmitted to other humans. On this page, you see the pegolin, poached for its scales and meat. The good news is that the Chinese government has removed the pegolin from the traditional Chinese medicine list. On this picture, you see, for example, the confiscation of 14 tons of pegalone scales in Singapore, worth $38.7 million. Unbelievable. And on the other slide, you see the pegalone used as consumption. What you see here is the wet market in Huan, the poaching in Africa, the unbelievable suffering of people and the global economical destruction. We have to bring an end to wildlife crime. Well, the, uh, the past 15 years I have worked at the Netherlands Forensic Institute. The Netherlands Forensic Institute is one of the leading forensic laboratories in the world. It's based in The Hague, city of peace and justice from the United Nations. The Netherlands Forensic Institute covers about 34 forensic disciplines on the one roof, from uh, forensic pathology to wildlife forensics and all kinds of forensic 
um, technologies and disciplines between. To start my presentation, actually, I want to start with some fundamentals. Some fundamentals you all know from, uh, from forensics. If you look at a police investigation, yeah, we start mostly with a technical investigation. And for this technical investigation, we use interrogation, you know, to question somebody, to get information out of a person. We use infiltration, you know, to send a police officer in a criminal organization to get information and bring it out of the criminal organization. And we use observation, you know, to follow someone and to create a complete bill, uh, uh, um, complete uh, idea of someone's life. The problem is it's sensory based. We use our sensors for interrogation, for interrogation, for observation. And what we can say about our sensors, they are very limited. My observation of a color will probably be not your observation. My observation of a story will probably be not the same as you. So our sensors are very, very limited. The problem is if you go on court only with only sensory based information you have a soft case in four it's not objective soft information and you won't get your case to court the thing with forensic investigation is like i told you nfi has more than 35 forensic disciplines everything we do investigations examines it's scientific based and the result will be objective evidence accreditation and strong case in court. If we look at the criminalistic triangle, you see three aspects. You have see the crime scene, the suspect and the victim. And the thing is, how can we create, how can we find the relation between these people? The only way we can find it on an objective way is through traces. And you know, year ago or maybe i said 20 years ago we had in the netherlands a mind-changing case a really big case in our country and it seems like the crime scene investigation was not good enough so what we did we we put a lots and lots of efforts and new technology because crime, the crime scene is the biggest carrier of forensic traces the crime scene and yeah, we have to learn to protect the crime scene we learned that we have to disturb the crime scene because on the crime scene, the traces are there in a certain sequence. We have to wear protective clothes on the crime scene. You know? Don't contaminate the scene. And don't contaminate, like I, like I said. So the traces are our silent witnesses and we have to obey that. And because of this knowledge, about 10 years ago, my director said to me, Andro, South Africa, a former colony of the Netherlands, um, um, has asked for our assistance. And he sent me to South Africa to give a lecture. So I went to the Stellenbosch University in Cape Town and I, and I delivered a lecture. And when I first finalized my lecture, a lady came up to me and she said, Andro, did you ever thought about to use forensics in wildlife and let me be honest to you 10 years ago i didn't know about wildlife crime not at all so the lady invited me to well, pay a visit to kruger park the southern african wildlife college and we will teach you we will we will learn you about forensics about wildlife and and what's going on so a few months later i went to africa and i went to the kruger park and there I received this lecture. On this slide, you see the Kruger Park and the Southern African Wildlife College. It's a college where they, 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 they teach uh, uh, wildlife ranges from all over Africa. And they told me, and I will actualize, actualize this, these numbers, the turnover in wildlife crime is about $30 billion annually. Each year, 350 million animals are poached 350 million it goes from butterflies to pegolins to the big five 
no animal is safe anymore. The past 10 years, 1,000 wildlife rangers lost their life in a combat against wildlife crime. You know? And it goes on and on. Can you imagine what will happen if in 10 or 20 years all the wildlife, the biggest asset from Africa is gone? People were losing their jobs and there will be an exodus to the big African cities who are overcrowded. You know, and I've, I've learned, learned to this story and you know, I've worked 35 years in the criminal justice chain in the Netherlands. And from that, that thing, I know the biggest forms of crime in the world are money laundering, are drugs, are arms, are human smuggling, but not wildlife crime. And this evening I was in my lodge and I mostly I heard lions outside the Kruger Park, but this time I heard a helicopter. I went out of my bed and I went to the director of the Southern African Wildlife College and he and some other people were crying. And I asked them, what happened? Is somebody deceased? Is somebody died? And they told me, a rhino just one kilometer out of the uh, Kruger Park, out of the, um, the college, was killed. And the calf, the little calf, was walking around. So they were looking with helicopters after the little calf. They found it and they brought it to a sanctuary. And I was really impressed. You know, adult people were crying because of a wild animal they didn't saw, they didn't know. So I start to realizing what was happening in wild in Africa. The next day, I went with the police to, uh, to see the, 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 the carcass of the animal. And while traveling to the carcass, they told me, well, Andro, there is a syndicate supply chain in wildlife. The first level is the poaching groups. They are the entry level. They exist of two or five members. They shoot animals and they have an ax with them to cut the rhino horn. As you know, the rhino horn, one kilo rhino horn, is, is, is more expensive than one kilo gold. The, the second level is the syndicate boss. You know, this is the receiver of the rhino horn. He finances the thing, he organizes it, he organizes the poaching groups. Then you have the buyer. It's most of the time a Vietnamese or Chinese national. And then you have the international distributor and the international consumer. And the last two, the four and five, are really hard to get. These are the people that we have to bring down with uh, follow the money techniques, you know, uh, forensic intelligence techniques. Okay. While we, we, entered, um, um, we, we, we entered the crime scene and I saw this huge rhino lying there, you know, it was amazing. You know, most of the time I had seen rhinos here in the zoo in the Netherlands, but this animal was about, you know, three, four times, three times the size of your, your, your car. It was a little bit like see 3000 kilo animals lying there. And they were cleaning up the mess. And when I looked around, I saw all kinds of forensic traces. You know, I saw fingerprints there. I saw cartridges, footprints, DNA, and probably the poachers would have a mobile phone with them, leaving all the data in the networks from the provider. But nobody cares about these forensic traces. And I was really surprised and shocked because these rhinos, these animals are killed in a area without people, you know, in a remote area. You know, there are never written statements. So the forensic traces are the only traces we can use to, to get the poachers. And in my memory, it's just like the crime scene, the human crime scene, as I know. Exactly the same traces. And 10 years ago, I thought to myself, with the knowledge we have, we can bring an end to wildlife crime with these technologies. So I went back to the Netherlands and I bring this story to my directors, my board of directors. 
And, you know, we have all these highly educated uh, um, um, doctors and professors in our institute uh, solving human crime scenes. And I come with a, tell them a story, well, we have to bring our knowledge to Africa, not for human crime scenes, but to save Africa, to save the world, you know, the wonderful world with the beautiful animals. And I bring them this story. And then my boss said to me, well, Andro, um, if you can find money, bring, make, bring a pilot, bring a pilot project so we have to find some data to show that it works. So with all the passion I got, I found 1 million euro somewhere in one of our organizations. And with this 1 million euro, we did a pilot in Botswana. We have trained 400 wildlife ranges in preserving the crime scene. But what, because what happened, wildlife ranges, wildlife veterinarians, police officers, they see that animal and they don't treat the scene as a, wild, as a wildlife crime scene. They enter the scene and destroy all the traces. So we have delivered one and a half year training on four, 400 wildlife ranges. And the minister of Botswana from environment told us just because of the training, we were able to, to capture more poachers. And that's what I wanted to hear. We have now data that with forensic science, we can, we can solve wildlife crime scenes. With this information, I went to the European Commission and I told the European Commission about the crimes that's, that's occurring in wildlife and if you could do something about it. Uh, and they asked me, oh, Andra, do you have a solution? How can we bring all these forensic technologies to the domain of wildlife? And I said to, me, to them, could we create an academy in Africa to train wildlife rangers and actually the whole criminal justice chain? Because to bring poachers to, to, to court, you have as well to train police officers, judges and prosecutors. And this idea was highly respected, you know, and the United Nations as well joined the project and they delivered 6 million euro to do something and to build the academy. But as you know, if you work in government, it is quite difficult to implement in, in a big forensic institute a big project from 6 million euro that we have to do internationally. So unfortunately, the project stopped. But like I told you, it was my idea and I couldn't stand it. So I said to my boss, well, I'm gonna do it privately. So I found foundations and money and I am working now to establish a wildlife forensic academy in Africa. And the thing is, it's about the rule of law. You know, we build societies based on the rule of law. The rule of law has to be the backbone of each society. Yeah, we need safety and security. We need law and order. If you build a society based, you know, without, without the rule of law, all your efforts will be worthless. You know, if you, buy, you, you establish businesses, you establish organizations, but if the rule of law is not obeyed, it will be worthless. So, but what we do in wildlife, we invest in breeding programs. We invest in fencing to, to, to protect animals. We invest in tourism, but there is no rule of law. Poachers get away with it. Police have a low priority on wildlife. There is no objective evidence. How can we protect wildlife without a strong criminal justice system? And that's actually the idea to, 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 to strengthen the rule of law. So, the idea was now to establish Hello, a sorry, wildlife... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sure. Your, your screen is out. Please re reshare your screen. Okay. Um, It's okay, sir? Yeah, carry on. Okay. So we have to restore the rule of law because what happened, um, 
criminals, syndicates, use sophisticated routes to travel their, their goods from one country to another country. When I was in, the, at, in Africa, uh, at the Southern African Wildlife College, they all as well told me that lots of poachers in that area, in that part of Africa, are from Mozambique. The guys from Mozambique, they cross the border and they come in a fight with man-eaters. Lions are lying there because they know that the poachers are entering uh, uh, the, the Kruger Park and humans are quite easy to catch for these animals. When they have, when they have passed this animal and they have survived it, they have a meeting with, with, with the rangers. They give the money rangers and for, their, for this money, the rangers give them information what the rhinos are. They go into the Kruger Park, they put up the tent and they wait on, until full moon. And when it's full moon, they shoot a rhino. And what they do, they have, mostly they got one bullet. So when they shoot the rhino, the rhino still lives. They take the axe, they move the horn and they go out of the Kruger Park. When they go out of the Kruger Park, they come in a combat with poacher, with, with um, wildlife rangers. After they have w uh, win the combat with the rangers, they cross the border, they go to the airport, and within 84 minutes, the horn is in Hanoi, in the market in Hanoi. So the infrastructure they have created is very sophisticated to kill an animal, and within 84, year, year, 84 hours, the horn is in Hanoi. So in our academy, we want to mobilize wildlife forensic knowledge and expertise. We want to deliver forensic training for a professional like um, veterinarians, police officers, uh, uh, rangers. The training for wildlife rangers, park menses, veterinarians, police officers, and custom people, because customs is very important. We as well will deliver study abroad programs for international students. Students from wildlife forensic, conservation, ecology, biology, and life sciences. To bring our knowledge to, to the students and professionals, we have created a concept. We, have a te we deliver theoretical training, virtual reality training, and experience lab, and then we go out for the wildlife field experience. But one of our biggest assets is an experience lab. In the Netherlands, in the Netherlands Forensic Institute, about eight years ago, we, I as well built an experience lab. An experience lab with all kinds of crime scenes. And all these crime scenes we have stalled with modern technologies as sensors, cameras, and and, uh, <clears throat> and all kinds of technology to monitor human behavior on a crime scene. Because what we didn't do is examine how a human behaves on a crime scene. So with all this technology we in, at NFI, we invited experienced police officers to come to our, our crime scenes and to deliver, to, um, to deliver the job. And what we experienced that they uses the thing they have used in their experience from years and years since, and they forgot the basic principles of forensics, of, of forensic investigation on the crime scene. So what we've done you know, on here, you see, it is our concept. On the left side in the middle, you see a house. Indoors, we're gonna build a house and we will stall the house with all kinds of sensors and technology. Within the same experience lab, we have as well wildlife crime scenes as you see in the middle. And you see in the ceiling, the cameras and the sensors. We have a street with, with cars. We have a laboratory inside and we have a courtroom. And above you see all these sensors and technology um, 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 observation what we're doing. On the left side in, in, in the screen, you see the observation room. So we have teachers in the observation room that can monitor and store all the data from the performance of the students of professionals. 
We can learn them how to think in scenarios because that's quite a difficult thing for wildlife rangers who didn't have the in-depth forensic training. You know, for example, if you enter the wildlife crime scene and you find the food trays, the footprint on itself is not very special. The specialty is to find the identity of the owner of the food trays. So you capture the food trays, you, 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 um, you, you take the food trays and you go to the car, you see the car, you open the car, you examine the car, and then you find the laptop. And we're now in the field of digital forensics. You open the laptop, and when you open the laptop, you examine it and you will find the house of the owner of the laptop. Then you enter the house, you know, you have the special um, um, crime scene management, how to enter a house. You examine the house and you find the shoe. And that can probably be the shoe of the owner of the footprint on the crime scene. So you can create lots and lots of um, scenarios to train people. And we use the same technologies as on a human crime scene. And the thing is, in many cases, in many times, um, wildlife ranges don't enter a laboratory or don't enter a, a courtroom. So what we do, when we have learned to think in scenarios, we bring the traces they found on the crime scene directly to the laboratory in our experience lab. So they can see through a microscope what a little trace is. And in the courtroom room, we can demonstrate what the value is of forensic objective evidence in a case. So that's the concept, how you're gonna train uh, wildlife ranges, police officers, prosecutors, and judges. Actually, the whole criminal justice chain. On this picture, you see on your left, a bigger picture of the crime scene. And on your right-hand side, you see the observation room with all the screens where we can monitor the behavior of forensic uh, examiners on a crime scene. And this is quite a refinet, refinet, um, uh, we had in the, at, at NFI um, uh, in former days simulated crime scenes, but we didn't have the technology to use it. And when I finished this project, uh, the CSI, the Hague project, with, with the technology to ex examine and monitor crime scenes, several universities, they um, did scientific investigation how people behave on a crime scene. And it was really an eye-opener to see what we have learned. Okay. Some other thing we would like to introduce in wildlife forensics is forensic intelligence. You see, this is a timeline. And in the middle, you see a crime scene. And most of the time, forensic examiners come at the crime scene when, uh, when somebody already died or when, a, when, a, when an animal already deceived, you know, you, you are actually too late. And then we bring the, you, when you invite the police and the prosecution and the judges. But you see, in nowadays in, in our society, we have digitized our world. My medical information is, in, is digitized at my doctor's place in the hospital. My, um, my financial information is digitized. My agenda is digitized. Everything is digitized. So what we have learned that if we can capture all this data before the crime scene, we can see patterns in the data. And if you can learn to understand a pattern, you know, we can prevent the killing of an animal, of a human. This technology, you know, we, uh, we use, for example, in big criminal, uh, with criminal organization or terrorist case, you know, protect our society from terrorist attacks or big criminal offense. But this technology, we can as well use protect animals from killing. You know, we can use satellites and GPS techniques to monitor the behavior of an animal. And when animal behaves on a certain way, 
it's the mon the GPS sensing uh, uh, signal to the handheld or the telephone of a wildlife ranger, and he can look and see what happens in the area. So we can prevent the killing of animals. Well, this advanced technology, we as well teach in our academy, and we work together with Professor Lucas Nolders. Professor Lucas Nolders is on the board of the Wildlife Forensic Academy, and he will help us to demonstrate and uh, how it works. And um, in South Africa, we are established uh, in, the, in the Western Cape of South Africa. Then we're gonna build the academy. And because of the pandemic, we couldn't start with, with the establishment, but um, our constructor will start in a month time to build the academy. And um, at the beginning of 2021, we can open the academy and receive our first students and professionals. Why we have chosen to, to South Africa, it has two reasons. You know, you as scientists, if, you, if when you go to a lecture or when you go to a seminar, in most of the time it's in Paris or New York, a place where it's, fu it's fun to be, so you can combine yeah, uh, your business to your pleasure. And that's why we're in Cape Town. But on the other hand, Cape Town has this magnificent Indian Ocean and Atlantic Ocean because our, our seas are as well poached. Our seas are as well poached. One hour from Cape Town, you have Buffersfontein, that's a nature and game reserve. On this reserve, about one hour from Cape Town, we have uh, um, a place surrounded with wildlife. And on this place, we're going to establish, as you see here, uh, the Wildlife Forensic Academy. On the picture, in the middle, you see our students' housing. And 150 meters from the students' housing, we will establish the academy. So we are in the middle of wildlife. Uh, students can, um, can, 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 uh, can feel, can see, can experience wildlife while having a training in our academy. So what could be, for example, a program that we're gonna, gonna, gonna present? You know, it's not in stone. We can build tailor-made training, but most of our training start with the human wildlife complex to teach people, you know, with a lot of people, you come in areas from animals and you get the human wildlife conflict. We teach them about wildlife poaching, wildlife trafficking, and illegal wildlife trade. We tell them about the rule of law, you know, that we have to sustain and to expand the rule of law as well in wildlife, you know. The chain of custody, you know, how do you bring your traces to police and court? Um, forensic science, you know, the role of forensics in wildlife, forensic awareness, how do we preserve a wildlife crime scene, trace detection and collection, forensic photography, digital forensics, laboratory training, the courthouse training, very important, you know, you can walk from the crime scene directly to our courthouse and our magistrates will train you and tell you what the, what, what, what the, the value is of the little trace you can find on a crime scene. Follow the money techniques to get the guys who are up on the pyramid, I told you, who are difficult to catch, but with follow the money and with forensic intelligence, we come very close. Wildlife handling, you know, how do you handle a wounded animal on a crime scene? You have to know something about wildlife autonomy, injured animal handling, and forensic pathology. And then we have the hands-on training and experience lab, crime scene scenario, human behavior, and we're as well working on virtual reality training on a wildlife crime scene. Because we will expect from, for example, here in the Netherlands, I have received from seven universities from the Netherlands and Belgium, they are interested to send students to South Africa to follow our courses. But the students need an international internship. So we are connected with two internship companies in Cape Town and we can deliver after our training internships 
in various um, disciplines. Well, actually, this was uh, my presentation about the Wildlife Forensic Academy, wildlife uh, uh, crime scenes and the behavior of people on a wildlife crime scene. Um, if you would like more information about what we're doing, um, how can you, uh, uh, how can you um, um, receive a course in South Africa and our institute, please contact Professor Abby Joseph because he is an wildlife forensic ambassador in India. So I would like to thank you for your, for your patience and your attention for my presentation. And I'm be very glad to answer some questions. Okay. Indeed, it was a wonderful session, uh, Mr. Andrew Woos. Uh, the message from Woos uh, is the splendid plentifulness of nature is a heritage that should be conserved for the future generation and not to be spoiled. With uh, this, uh, I will open the topic for discussion. Thank you. I'm sir, I am a student from Forensic Science. If I want to, oh, I lost it. Mr. Sifa? Yes, Andrew. Is, I saw some questions, but um, they are already gone. Okay, I can assist you. There is okay. a question regarding uh, how blood spatter now the tool used by understanding the pattern of blood. Is there any possibility for understanding that weapon that is used for uh, killing the animal by checking the blood spatter? Oh, okay. Well, that's a quite in-depth uh, question. Um, I can get back to you to give you a, a, a good answer on that. Um, it's not really my domain, so I can tell you something, but um, I want to do it professionally. And can I react on, um, on an email on your question, please? Yeah, Andrew, I can provide the kindly, the participant, please mention your email ID so that I can transfer your question to him. And uh, yeah, please, yeah, team from I can... Wildlife Academy will contact you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Keely, for your. I see quite nice uh, information coming up. Well, there is a question regarding uh, Africa China relationship. Uh, so, is there any comments from your side? Hello. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, so I didn't hear the question. Andrew, there is a question regarding the Africa-China relationship. Uh, is yeah. there any comments from your side? From the Africa relationship? Yes, Africa-China relationship. Yeah, um, you know, because um, um, we established this academy in Africa because of the fact that Africa has unbelievable biodiversity and you know what we want to what we want to achieve in africa is many many wildlife ranges in africa have a low understanding of uh, writing and reading so with an experience lab people don't have to learn from books but they can experience in an experience lab and you know and in africa we are surrounded by wildlife, uh, both uh, on sea and on land. And, uh, and another thing is the plants and, and trees in Africa are as well endangered. So that's why we choose to sit in Africa. There is a question regarding the scope of wildlife forensics. Can you comment on that one? Uh, the, the sound is not too good. Could you re re repeat the question? Uh, the scope of wildlife forensics. What is the scope of wildlife forensics? The, the, I didn't hear you. The wildlife, what from wildlife forensics? The scope yeah, the, of scope. wildlife forensics. The scale. Scope, scope. The scope. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe. Okay. The scope of wildlife forensics. Yes, yes, that was the question. Well, um, the scope of wildlife forensics and related to Africa is that wildlife forensics has a quite low priority in Africa. Um, um, in many times, uh, as animals are killed, it's it's um, it's a, it's a killing, and nobody has the owner of the element of the of the, the the animal. It's just in the wild, so nobody goes actually to the prosecutor or the police and say somebody have killed my animal. So the priority is quite low. On the other hand, wildlife is the biggest asset in Africa. And there come, there come lots and lots of tourists to Africa to experience wildlife. So economically see, it's a big form of income. So there are two things happening now in Africa. Because of the poaching, yeah, we got less animal and, and tourists will stay away. And on the other hand, um, um, there is a far chance that people will lose their job. They're going to travel to the overcrowded cities. And what Europeans are very afraid of, that lots of people from Africa come for economical reasons to Europe to find work. So wildlife, the problem with wildlife is not on its own. It's a very complex, um, a complex environment. Is that enough answer? Thank you. Um, I see some interesting questions from students or professionals, yeah. and I'm, I'm very, very glad to answer them. So um, you please feel free to share my email address and I will come back to them. Yeah, definitely. I will be sharing the details of the participants to you so you okay. can communicate to you to them easily. And also I will provide your details to the participants too. So if any okay. queries, they will contact you directly. Okay, thank you. Okay, dear participants, uh, the session is concluded and thank you Andrew Woz, uh, Dr. Kirti Ma'am, Sonia Ma'am and the chairing expert Dr. Anishi M, uh, the moderator Dr. Anu for being with us in this session. The participants can mention their email ID in the chat box uh, and their full name for receiving the e-certificate. Um, so I would like to thank uh, Anama ma'am, uh, Dr. G.P. Aravind and other senior police officials and forest officers, those who are present over here. So if you have any queries, you can uh, mention in the chat box. We will connect uh, to the uh, Wildlife Academy. Uh, so they will contact you directly regarding the 